in this example, uh, now what they're asking you to do is again do another division problem. So this is question number 11. So now they're asking you again to do f of g of x. Okay. So again, all we're simply doing, ladies and gentlemen, is taking the f of x function and dividing it by the g of x function. And that's really it. So therefore, I simply have 2x divided by the square root of x minus 1. I thought I did this problem. Maybe I did it the other way. Um, if you guys look at this problem, Again, can I simplify? Is there anything that you could like cancel out or factor? No. Um, so we can't simplify this at all. The only thing now we need to look at is our domain, right? Now, there's actually two restrictions. The only restrictions we have talked about in this class, when you have a variable in the denominator and when you have a variable under the radical symbol, right? So to find our domain, since we can't simplify, this is simplified. We can't do anything else with it. So that was easy, right? We just had to put one over the other. But to find the domain is a little bit more difficult because now we have two restrictions that we need to apply to, right? So our two restrictions is our denominator we set equal to 0 to find the restrictions of um, a denominator. And then we take our, our radicand, which is just x, and we set that greater than or equal to 0. That's the restrictions of our uh, radical. Because we have two restrictions. We have a radical and we have a denominator, correct? Our variable in the radical, under the radical, and under in the denominator. So we have to do both of those restrictions. So here I solve. So I add 1, add 1. Square root of x equals 1. Now to undo the square root of x, I square both sides. So x equals 1. So therefore, when x is equal to 1, does that make my denominator equal to 0? Yes. So guess what? The domain is, cannot be 1. Does that make sense? Your domain cannot include the number 1. Does that make sense? OK. The next restrictions. Again, what you do is you take whatever's under your radical, which we call our radicand, and we make it greater than or equal to 0. Because think about it. Can you take the square root of any number, any negative number? No, right? So it has to be. So all the x's that you're going to choose have to be greater than or equal to 0. However, we have a. You can just put that down. You just write that down. So we have a little bit of an issue here, though. Because if you guys look at this, um, x has to be greater than or equal to 0, all right? Um, but it cannot equal 1. So it's kind of an odd way to write this. I'm going to show you guys how we would write this in pre-calculus. Um, but you guys can write this in the thing. So we know that all values can be greater than or equal to 0. Can it equal 0? Yes, because what's the square root of 0? 0. 0 minus 1 is negative, negative 1. So that works. So it's going to be the domain is going to be all values of x greater than or equal to 0, however, such that x cannot equal 1. All right, so that's one way to write it. Another way in interval notation, which the way we write it, which we'd write it in pre-calculus, would look like this. It'd be all numbers from 0 to the number 1. It can't equal 1, so we use that. And then from all numbers 1 to infinity. And then we connect them by a union. Okay, Just a little bit of precursor. Don't really worry about if you understand the notation or not. As long as you understand how to use the two restrictions, that's what I'm mainly focusing on for you guys right now.